Good morning. Uh, how you doing today? <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, if, if you hear any of our gang from Maine uh, say to you when they, when they are asked the question, how you doing, uh, it's something that I am privileged to do up there in Maine is I coach soccer. I love soccer. Um, and uh, I love connecting with the young people in our church and in our community. And one of the things that we try to teach them over and over again is um, uh, when you ask them the question, how you doing, uh, when you don't have anything else really important to say, you say, so happy, okay? So on the count of three, I'd like everybody to say, so happy, all right? One, two, three. So happy. All right, so, so when somebody comes up to you and you don't have anything else uh, uh, great to say, you can always have that one thing there that you can say, so happy. So how are you doing today? So happy. Excellent, excellent. Well, it is um, my, wife and I, my wife and my privilege to be here. I am so excited to uh, be the one to share with you, uh, at least in this component of your day-to-day -day routine, uh, God's Word, and I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles and turn to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Who can tell me what is the theme verse of the camp this year? Yes, right here. Oh, close. Hebrews 4, 16. That's right. Hebrews 4, 16. And it talks about when um, we have the opportunity, we are invited to come to the throne of grace to receive mercy uh, or to find mercy, receive mercy and find grace in the time of need. Throughout this week, there are two things that I'd really like to emphasize as we look at God's word. Number one, I'd like to emphasize that you can have confidence in your relationship with Christ. Number two, I want to help you in, or encourage you to have a heartbeat or a mindset recognizing that your ultimate value is in Christ. So it's Christocentric, but it's finding both our confidence to come before the Lord and confidence in our value in the Lord that motivates us and spurs us through life in everything that we do. How many of you uh, ever need help? Please raise your hand. All right, excellent. This is fantastic. I need help all the time. I'm thankful for my wife who helps me in so many different ways. Uh, I am thankful for a church family that helps me in so many different ways. And I'm thankful for many of you who have already helped us in our uh, limited time here this uh, week already. Being in need of help is a reality that happens in all of our lives. It is usually, though, when we need help that we feel less confident. In fact, it is often when we need help that we struggle with our own self-value. Because it's like, well, if I am an independent agent here in this world, if I can do whatever I can put my mind to do and I don't need help, we, we get this mindset that is not very helpful to our relationship with the Lord. Uh, I have a lot of loves in my life. Um, uh, my wife, my Lord, my church, uh, my family. Uh, I, I love different sports. I love soccer. I love cycling. And a number of years ago, a friend of mine uh, was a help to me to learn how to cycle up Mount Washington. How many of you like cycling here? Please raise your hand. All right, excellent. Um, I had heard about this race for some time. It's not really a high speed race um, because it's up a mountain, not on flat surfaces or anything like that. Um, and it's really not a long race. It's only about 7.6 miles, okay? Uh, problem is going up that, that mountain, the average grade is 12 to 16%. If, if you understand what that is, that's pretty steep. You're climbing in seven miles about 
4,500 feet overall. And um, uh, he said, well, if, if you're going to do this, Lael, you need to practice. You need to train for this. And so almost a year before the race, he said, you need to start training. And so I started training. And uh, for a few months, I trained on my own. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had a good time doing it. And then he said, well, come on down and train with me. And he just upped it up a, a whole bunch of notches for me. And then uh, one of our first bike rides out, he takes me 32 miles. And it's like, wow, I want 32 miles. That's incredible. Next time we go out, we go 60 miles. And it's like, that's crazy, going on a bike 62 miles. And then, and then he said, okay, now you need to work on mountain climbing. And so I'm feeling good by this point. It's May. Uh, I started in you know, September, October. The race was in uh, August. And at about, um, it was in about May, he said, we can't go up Mount Washington, but we can go up this mountain that's about two miles long, but it simulates the, the steep grade that you'll face on Mount Washington. And so we get out there that day. And I'm feeling good. <clears throat> we're riding down. We're warming up. Then we hit that mountain. And I'm like, I'm just going to powerhouse over this thing. It's only two miles, right? I get about halfway up there. My heart beats out of control. And all I want to do is stop. And so you know what I, I do? I stop. I just need to take a break. That was one of the worst things that I could do at that point. Because starting on an incline is a lot harder than starting from a flat surface. And there was no flat surface once you started going up that. Well, I eventually and very humbly made it to the top of that mountain. Not very well, but I did make it. And uh, he, I think, went up and down a few times that day. I made it once, okay? I get in the car feeling very, very defeated. And the first question out of his mouth is, so, Lael, what did you learn? And the first thing out of my mouth is, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for Mount Washington. So the next few months were much more intense training. And um, when I finally did Mount Washington, I did make it up. I didn't stop on the way up. And um, I'm thankful for friends who came alongside me and helped me. In 2 Kings we are confronted with a story that probably many of you know. The name of an army general by the name of Naaman, he is the general of the Aramean army. They are enemies of Israel. And we come across it in 2 Kings that he has a problem. In fact, he needs help. For all that he is able to do, for all his accomplishments, for all his military victories, for his reputation, all those things, he is humbled by a massive health need. The point that I want to make today to you is simply this. Your need for help is the Lord's invitation to you to glorify him by helping you. Psalm 5015 says this. It's one of my favorite verses. It says, Call on me in the day of trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will glorify me. It's an incredible verse, because when you stop and think about it, it's God's invitation to you to say, I need your help. And God says, and I'll help you. And not only will I help you, but in the process of me helping you, I will glorify myself. Now, I don't know where you come from, from your relationship with the Lord or your understanding of his word or anything like that. But one of the things that you will find throughout his word is one of the primary purposes of God in our lives is to glorify him, right? Our job here on earth is to glorify him. Our job in heaven will be to glorify him. Our job at Chehi is to glorify him. And one of the great ways that he is glorified is by you admitting that you need help from him. Well, here in 2 Kings, we find a person who probably isn't thinking about God too much. 
But I want you to know that when you recognize your need for help, you suddenly become much more prone to listen to help. In chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Now Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man with his master. And notice this, and highly respected, because by him the Lord, the Lord God Yahweh, had given victory to Aram. The man also was a valiant warrior. And in five little words here, but he was a leper. First, there are three things that I see in this passage that he needed help with. The first one is an obvious need. He needed help in his health. Now, I want you to think, and I don't want you to volunteer answers at this point, but I want you to think of answers in your mind. If I were to come up, and, and I hope to do this with at least some of you this week, and I say, hey, what's going on in your life? How can I pray for you? What are the things that you need God to help you with this week? What would you say? Maybe some of you are thinking, God, I really need help for when I go home. Because home is not a nice place right now. Maybe some of you say, it's health. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it through this week. I made it through last week, but my voice is shot. Anybody close to that one right now? All right, okay. We've got the corner up here and scattered throughout here, okay. I need help. I need help, Lord. What, what else? Some of you need help with sleep. It's like, I, I, I sleep well on my own bed, on my own pillow. But when I sleep here, it doesn't feel the same, okay? There are other things that are are deeply serious. Some of you need help, perhaps, in your prayer life. You're like, I'm having a really hard time praying. Pastor Lael, I, I just, I'm having a hard time praying. I've tried. I'm so disappointed. I, I remember hearing about one young person uh, in our community up there in Maine, and she prayed for, for several years about one thing, and, and it didn't seem to happen, so she got mad and bitter with God and walked away from God. We need help. Naaman needed help, and it was an obvious need for him. He had a health need of, or uh, his, his need, obviously, was he was a leper. I want you to notice several things, though, as we look at that. It says in verse 2, Now the Arameans had gone out in bands and taken a captive, a little girl from the land of Israel. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. Then he would cure him of his leprosy. I just said to you, many times when we are in need of help, we become more prone to listen. And when you recognize the needs that are in your life, you are most likely going to be very attentive to different forms of help. Now, please understand, some of those forms of help, because the world has lots of self-help things. They want to help you all the time. The, the, the world wants to help you with your problems. But please listen, there is a difference between what the world offers and the world's wisdom and God's wisdom. In this particular case, God had allowed a little girl to be taken captive and placed into Naaman's house, and she speaks up, and says, I wish my master Naaman could go see the prophet of God in Israel because then he could be cured. Well, Naaman takes, uh, takes notice of it and he sets things in motion so that he can receive help. Please understand this. First principle that I want to give you about your needs and about help is don't underestimate the source of help which the Lord may bring into your life. Don't underestimate the source of help that the Lord might bring into your life. It could be somebody sitting beside you right now. It could be a conversation. It could be a chapel message. It could be one of your teachers this week. It could be an injury on the famous battlefield of, um, uh, what is it? 
ultimate frisbee. That's right. Okay. It could be an injury. It could be, it could be a number of different things. And you're like, no, nah, that's, that's not the help that I'm looking for. Naaman could have been like that, but he was desperate. Okay, I'll give that a try. Well, so he goes to Israel, and I won't go into all the details. You can read that in this passage. Um, but it, it says he gets to Israel, and the prophet hears that he's come. He, he, he tells the king of Israel, send him my way, and Naaman comes. And it says in verse 9, so Naaman came with his horses and his chariots and stood at the doorway of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you will be clean. Now, that seems pretty simple, doesn't it? All you need to do is go down to the Jordan River and clean yourself seven times, or wash yourself, or dip down in seven times. But this points out his number two need. You see, he was blind to his second need. He was blind to his second need, and his second need was humility. Many times when we have a need, when we need help, one of the biggest things that blinds us to the ability for, um, not the ability, but our receptivity of God's help is our pride. Our pride keeps us from being helped by God. They say pride goes before a fall. Pride also keeps us from the great help that God can give to us. And we see that very quickly here in this passage. In 2 Kings chapter 5, after he's told this, we see several things in Naaman's character. Number one, we see his offense. In verse 11, but Naaman was furious And went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. He's identified himself as a leper, not as a warrior. He's identified himself with his need. Not with his name, but with his need. He considers himself a leper. But he also goes in with this this facade of pride that says, I thought the prophet would come out, wave his hands over me and say, be healed. And what does he do? He sends a messenger out. He doesn't even come to me himself. And not only that, but he tells me to go wash in the Jordan River. I want you to see that he's offended, first of all. Many times how God seeks to help us, we can easily and naturally become offended. I wasn't expecting that. That's that's not what I wanted you to do, God. I've had people come to me as a pastor and say, Pastor, I've been praying for this for years. And then everything went out of control. And I'm thinking to myself, and I know it's easy for me to to step back from, from the crisis that a person is going through, but many times I've thought to myself, you know, having prayed for that for years, and then some big crisis comes, it might be actually the Lord's help at that point. But we become offended instead of accepting of what we've been praying toward. He becomes defensive. He becomes defensive in verse 11. He said, I thought that he would come out. He, he turns with rage, okay? He says in verse 12, he says, Are not Abana and Farfa the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. He turns away in rage and then enter his servants. Thank the Lord for servants that speak up. Verse 13, it says, Then his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, had the prophet told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? I want you to think about that. Sometimes the help that God is bringing into our lives is not received or not accepted because it's not what we were asking for or thinking that would help us. And yet other people step in and say, take a chill pill, <laughs> take a break, take... listen, you could do this. If it works, great. If it doesn't, 
you're no worse for the wear. He humbles himself, and in verse 14, he goes down and dips himself in the Jordan seven times. And according to the word of the Lord, of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In the camp verse for the week, we are told, let us therefore draw near with confidence, boldness, or freedom to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Well, that's his second need. The first need was he had an obvious need for help. The second one was a blind need. He had a need for humility. The third one is actually a very interesting one for us, and I should give you the, the principle for the second need here. The, the principle that I'd like you to remember for the second one is confidence in Christ starts with the acceptance of his word and then obedience to it. Don't let pride keep you from accepting the word of the Lord. Now, all of you have access to a Bible. You have the word of the Lord. You don't need to find a prophet, okay? You have been surrounded by teachers and people that can encourage and input God's word into your life. But please remember this. Confidence in Christ starts by accepting his word and then obeying it. Not just being like, oh, that's nice. Let me go do my own thing. The third need, though, and it's a new need, he had need for pardon, peace, and worship of God. I want you to see this, and, and I'll wrap up on this point, but it says in verse 15, when he returned to the man of God with all his company, he came and stood before him and offered him presents. The man of God refused the presents, but in verse 17, we see something very interesting. Naaman said, if not, please let your servant at least be given two mule loads of earth. Dirt is what he's asking for. For your servant will no longer offer burnt offering, nor will he sacrifice to the other gods but the Lord. Why is that important? Because he says in verse 15, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So please take this present from your servant now. You see, Naaman recognized when God helped him that he was the only God to be served. And so he says, well, prophet of God, I'll give you presents. The prophet says, no. And then he says, well, if I can't do that, then I want to worship your God. And in their mindset, worshiping the God of Israel meant worshiping him on his soil. But he lived back in Aram. So he says to the prophet, can I take a few mule loads of dirt and bring it back so I can worship your God there? Man of God accepts that, but in verse 18, notice this. In this matter, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, I bow myself in the house of Rimmon. When I bow myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon your servant in this matter. This is one of the things that I realized about camp. Camp is awesome. How many of you are enjoying yourselves this week? Oh, yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Some of you are going to go back to a place that you have all these big question marks. You have all these big needs. And you're going to be like, I don't know how to navigate my relationship with God, with my group of friends, with my family, in my school life, in my community, in my work life. And you know what? This is where Naaman was. He's like, I've got to go back, and I still have to serve the king of Aram. I have to go back and I have to, 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 to be in a place that I'm going to be surrounded by false gods. And he says to Elisha, Elisha, what am I supposed to do? Will the Lord pardon me for this? And I love Elisha's simple discipleship. <laughs> he said to him, go in peace. So he departed from him some distance. The third, his third need was worshiping the Lord and pardon and peace from God. You see, we'll talk about this a little bit later this week, but one of your greatest needs is peace with God. The principle that I want you to take home or to think about today on that one is do not underestimate the source of help. Excuse me. 
Uh, when we recognize the Lord as our greatest source of help, all other responsibilities realign to worship Him. When we recognize the Lord as our greatest source of help, all other responsibilities, friendships, relationships, realign to worship Him and to be in right relationship to Him. I hope throughout this week you recognize that Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, is your greatest source of help and that your worship and your relationship with Him realigns every aspect of your life. Let me pray with you and then we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, as we go about this day, take that which was important to each one today, to you especially, and settle that in our hearts, our thoughts, and even in our conversations. Bless the work that is being done today, the friendships that are being built, and Lord, the glory that you are seeking from us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.